Right, thank you very much. Uh, Nicholas Hammond was mentioned right at the beginning of today's uh, proceedings. And uh, Nick Hammond was a very great scholar and much revered at Bristol, which is uh, my own university. But if you had to construct a league table of historians whose theories have since been proven wrong, <laughs> Nick would probably stand very high in, in that particular table because he was a very bold uh, uh, theorist. Uh, his uh, ideas about the Battle of Chironea took rather a knocking today. Uh, and a slightly different example was his um, uh, view about the Battle of Marathon, or one aspect of it. Herodotus says that the uh, hoplites ran uh, no less than eight stades, so something like uh, one and a half kilometers, uh, wearing their full armor, sprinting across the field to engage the Persians. This is a statement which has always been disbelieved and people have struggled to find ways to explain it and, and reinterpret it and so on. And one of the things about Nick was that he uh, worked very hard to save at almost any cost the uh, literal meaning of ancient sources. So in order to prove Herodotus right, he put on his heavy armor and he ran across the plain of Marathon. This is an early example of the combination of reenactment and what one can learn from those empirical experiments uh, combined with, with knowledge of the ancient sources. Now, I'm not sure that he proved his point because he very likely was wearing the full 72 German pounds. <laughs> yeah. And so what this proved was not that the hoplite phalanx could, could cover this distance uh, at, at full tilt in, in heavy armor, but that Nicholas Hammond could do it. <laughs> uh, his, his fitness was in fact legendary. But in a way he, he, was, he was right because uh, if you take on board the findings of more recent research and realize that the armor did not weigh that much, then this becomes much more feasible. Uh, you may allow a little bit of room for exaggeration, but in this case, uh, there, there, it may be possible, in fact, to, to save the phenomenon in the literal sense of, of Herodotus's uh, text. Well, that's a very small illustration of uh, how far research in these uh, matters has come since the 1960s when Nicholas was, was writing. I think uh, in that time, uh, concern with military affairs had uh, in the profession as a whole, not amongst the important people who were still laboring in the field, but in the profession as a whole, interest in these matters had somewhat receded to the margins of attention. But uh, perhaps beginning in the early 80s, historians rediscovered the central importance of the army and military affairs to ancient life, economically, socially, politically. And there began a revival of uh, research in, in these areas, which gathered momentum over the years. And there are people in this room today who have contributed to this program who were responsible for this reinvigoration and others who have, uh, have carried it forward. So uh, we have seen today a tremendous array of the latest of findings, uh, uh, papers and the latest research from uh, the very tiniest details building up to the, to the big picture uh, of the implications of some of these things for major trends in, in ancient history. We've had a, a wonderful and exemplary uh, set of papers today, and I'd like to invite you to thank all of the speakers again. Now, secondly, I'd like to thank uh, the, the organizers of this event. The uh, Hellenic Society, uh, of which I'm the president, is one of the sponsors, but in fact, most of the heavy lifting for this has been done by the Romans. It seems to be <laughs> historically appropriate somehow. So I'd like to single out for particular thanks uh, Dominic Rathbone, uh, Fiona Haar, uh, Philip Kay, he of the microphone, sprinting around the room, there he is, and student helpers, some of whom may still be here and might like to stand up and take a bow. Are they still with us? Uh, there's Phil anyway. Uh, okay, anyway, thanks to, to all of them for their tremendous efforts in doing all the work to get this organized. And uh, a particularly warm word of thanks to our sponsor, Chris Levitt, for uh, making the whole event possible. Thank you very much indeed. And lastly, uh, a very uh, warm word of thanks to you uh, for coming out in such impressive numbers. 
and for being such an enthusiastic and formidably well-informed audience. Listening to the papers and the questions today, I thought to myself, I'm very glad that I wasn't giving a paper because the questions were very insightful and very incisive, but so also uh, were the answers. Now, I don't imagine uh, all of you, perhaps you have, but uh, perhaps not all have had a chance to see the um, uh, exhibition of uh, paintings upstairs. Uh, unfortunately, it's closed now, but it will be uh, available for viewing until the end of July. So if you wish to come back and see it, just present yourself there, explain who you are, and they will let you in to see it. Uh, I hope you noticed or will notice the uh, fantastic library, uh, the combined library of the societies and the institute uh, in which the paintings are displayed. It's one of the great libraries in the world, in particular for research into these topics. So if you aren't already, let me close with a plug. If you aren't already a, a member of either of the societies, uh, then uh, by virtue of becoming one, you can have access to the library and also have borrowing privileges. So let me just leave you with that thought while I thank you once again and draw the proceedings to a close. <laughs>